So we are right outside of Bryce Canyon. We were going to camp inside the National Park, but it's so cold and the National Park campsites do not have electricity. So there's this Ruby's campground. Um, it's, it, Ruby seems like she owns this town right outside of the National Park because Ruby's Restaurant, Ruby's this, Ruby's Lodge, Ruby's that. Um, so it, this is a huge campground. We're in Site 88, um, but there's not a lot of people here right now. But, um, you know, we, we made the sacrifice. We wanted the electricity. So we're going to put up a full campsite here and get set up. So we had a little emergency room visit. I started feeling very dizzy when we were setting up our campsite and it continued until the next morning. So we went into Cedar City, which is about 100 miles away to the emergency room there. And I was diagnosed with elevation sickness. So they gave me an IV, pumped me full of fluids, gave me several prescriptions. And within about three hours, I was feeling better. But it's just something to consider when you are coming from a lower elevation state like Florida and you're going to somewhere like Bryce Canyon, um, you know, keep in mind uh, that elevation could be an issue for you. I never thought that that would happen to me. I've never even had motion sickness before. So just something to keep in mind. Now that I'm feeling better, it's Sunday morning, Easter, and we are going to take the tour through Bryce Canyon National Park. Park Pass. Black Time National Park Pass. It's still chilly this morning. It's in the 40s but it's supposed to warm up to, I think it said 69. Okay, so it is crowded in here this morning. Let's take a look around. Probably people trying to get in out of the cold and wind. So I guess Bryce Canyon is at the top of the Grand Staircase Escalante. This must be Grand Canyon right here. There's the Cedar Breaks National Monument. Grand Staircase National Monument right there. And here's Bryce right over here. Okay. So this is just the whole area from Bryce all the way down to the Grand Canyon. Pretty cool. And then there's a little informative plaque about hoodoos and the different features of the hoodoos. And here is a little display about the prairie dogs. It says press to hear the recording. Your favorite Situation game, one. game animal. Situation one. Yeah, that's the prairie dog. And look, here's what it looks like underground. When we went on that Jeep ride in Palo Duro Canyon, I talked about how the prairie dogs would destroy the root systems of the plant of the uh, grass. Did you know that the pronghorn antelope is the fastest land mammal in the United States? I did not. Did you learn that here in this? No, I knew that before. <laughs> you know, I still feel very lightheaded and we've been here for two days now. Coming from Florida, coming from a lower elevation, People beware. I've never had altitude sickness before in my life, but I certainly am experiencing it here. And it's very crowded in here. I think Fred's ready to get the heck out. Me too. I can't stand these crowds. After spending a little money at the visitor store, we're gonna go tour the park. And there is a shuttle here at Bryce Canyon. It says it's easy to use and it's free. Beautiful ponderosa pines. Beautiful tree. The thing about these beautiful ponderosa pine trees is that you can climb them. If a big grizzly bear is on your ass, you can get up that tree, he will come also. But at least you have a chance to kick him in the head and uh, uh, maybe he will get exhausted and uh, abort the meal. Get out of here. Get. 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 This is the Bryce Canyon Lodge. We will go inside. 
see what this is about. The dining room over there. And another gift shop. One that is much less crowded. Look at here, here's an auditorium. Maximum capacity, 141 people. Oh, what a beautiful, what a beautiful room. This is really nice. This is much better than that gift shop at the visitor center. These soaps smell amazing. And look at these pretty bowls. $80, it's beautiful, I love it. Look at that. Get it, it has the spoon that matches it. Get it. Yeah. It's very pretty. There's a lot of pretty things in here. Look at Fred. I think he's found something he likes. Native American handcraft. Oh, look at all this stuff. I think that instead of buying pictures like that like i normally do the pictures that i take with my camera i'm going to develop them and get some mats mats and um, do that myself this is me this morning after rolling out of the camper a bit disheveled and they do have some very pretty jewelry here it's pretty expensive <laughs> Fred's found the men's items over here. So I'm going to get this for my mother. Okay. And Fred's going to get this one for his mother. Mm -hmm. I, like this one. I do too. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Uh, I do too. Okay. And I like this one for my mom. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Mom. I hope you like your bracelet. Now we're going to walk up this very short path to Inspiration Point. Look at that. Oh, it looks different without the snow. Honestly, I think it's prettier without the snow. Do you? It's very pretty. That's a trail. I see people walking way down there. Oh, I see it. It's quite pretty. That's a nice trail. It is. And then if you want to continue to walk up to the top of Inspiration Point, there's your path right there. Look at that view. Look at all these hoodlums out there. <laughs> Look at that. This is quite an incline here. Oh, but check this out. Wow. Be careful. That is magnificent, isn't it? So that was Inspiration Point. And when you look around the amphitheater, it looked to me like that was about the highest point. Okay, so now we are looking at Pariah Point. Look at that. 
Beautiful. Look at how far down that goes. Golly. So now we're walking to the end of Pariah Point. And here's a trailhead right here. This is the Bryce Point Trailhead. This certainly is pretty. Look at the mountains in the background. So from this point, we see a little town. Fred was wondering what town that was. It's possible that's the town of Tropic. See, these shuttles stop at every point. And I guess if you ride the shuttle, it just prevents you from having to deal with parking. Which, really, parking hasn't been that bad. I would imagine at certain times of the year it's worse. So Fred, Fred confirmed with some of the rangers that are here that the little town that we were looking at was actually the town of Tropic. That was a good call, Fred. Well, now we're going deeper into the park and you can see there's a road close signs here. The map says that they close this road during snowstorms. Rainbow Point, I think is about 15 miles away and that's the highest point in the park. We're gonna head out there. The ranger said that we should ride this road all the way to the end and then catch the viewpoints as we come back. And he said all the viewpoints would be on the right hand side. That was his advice. Today is such a beautiful day. We're enjoying the skylight in the truck. So if you look at the map, there, there are a lot of trails in here. It's too bad that I got so sick yesterday we weren't able to do any of these trails. But we're able to see all the viewpoints and drive the, um, the scenic loop through the park. So as we climb in elevation, there's still snow left over from the other day. Oh, this road just keeps climbing and climbing. So this, this is mile 18 of the loop road. This is the last point, Novempa Point. And we are up over 9,100 feet here. Okay, and Rainbow Point is at the same pull off, the same little parking area. So we're actually gonna go look at Rainbow Point first. And I believe this is the highest point in the park. It's over 9,100 feet in elevation. I'm testing my elevation pills that the doctor gave me yesterday. So you can see all the snow that's still left down there. You can see for miles, can't you? This little plaque says that this is one of the highest plateaus in Utah. 
So this is Rainbow Point Picnic Area. And now we're gonna walk out here and see this Yovimpa Point. Actually, it's a long way around to that Yovimpa Point and I'm gonna pass. Long way around. So this is just one of the viewpoints on the road as we go back down towards the entrance of the park. Beautiful. This is a pull-off for Black Birch Canyon. So this is a pull-out for Ponderosa Point. This is a pretty one. Very pretty. So I wanted to get out and touch the snow just one more time. Oh yeah, look. I love it. It's so awesome. Being from Florida, just don't get this too often. It's very cool. Look how very cool. Fred's hollering at me to come on. So neat. So this is likely going to be our last stop along this road, but we're going to check out the natural bridge. Pretty amazing. Wow. So yes, the, the pullouts certainly had beautiful views. But there's also a beauty in this park as you drive along this 18 mile long road and you see the forested area. It's gorgeous. There's probably a lot of wildlife that live up in, the, in these woods. It's very pretty. So there are two campgrounds inside Bryce Canyon National Park, Sunset Campground and North Campground. Sunset Campground typically is reservation only, and North Campground is first come, first serve. Although I think that sometimes they switch that around. So this is the North Campground. like about the largest site we've seen so far. Site 13 over here. Site 15. Looks like a pretty big site. Site 17. Night 19. That's the North Campground. It's pretty nice. I just wish they had electric. It looks to me like when the campground is full that people are staying in this overflow parking lot. So the campground where we chose to stay, Ruby, Ruby's Inn RV Park, is right outside the gate. I mean, you could walk to the gate. So, and, and we have electricity there. Full, all full services. And now this is Ruby's in general store. 
There's a laundry mat here. Oh, there's a gift store in here too. And then this is the Aspen Lodge right here. We're gonna check out this general store. Okay, so this gift store is pretty amazing. It's huge. They have all kinds of stuff in here. They really have some pretty stuff in here. What are these? Knives? <gasps> Look at those. Wow. Made from antler and bone. These bracelets in here, this one is $1,800. Very expensive. Just a. Got it. They all, are they, they look like they're handmade, don't they? Mm -hmm. they are. Look at this little tomahawk. Alabaster. $75. Navajo, it said on it. Very pretty. I love alabaster. For our last night in Bryce for dinner, we have these carrots in the Instant Pot again. We have Cracker Barrel mac and cheese. And Fred made some steak on the Blackstone. Yummy, we're starving. Well, we have left Bryce Canyon and we are now headed towards Capitol Reef National Park. And we are taking scenic Byway 12. Highway 12 is one of the most scenic highways in America. The highway has two national parks, Bryce and Capitol Reef at each end, with 1.7 million acres of the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in between. Wow, this is incredible. Look at that. So a big switch back here. And then we're going down there on this road. I'm all for that right now. Back to some lower ground in Capitol Reef. Really looking forward to it. Not having to take those deep breaths. the side of the cliff? are deep into the Dixie National Forest and we're seeing campgrounds along the sides of this road. But we are in some pretty deep 
woods right here. It's, it's spectacular. We just passed the Red Canyon Visitor Center. This area is beautiful. 